I'm here at Nafina GAA Club in Dublin reporting for Off The Ball. 3,000 members call Nafina home. It's home to over 125 competitive teams. And this week the club was rocked with the news that everything here in front of me and behind me, this main pitch and two all-weather pitches, have been requisitioned as part of a plan to build the Metro Link. We're here to talk to members to find out their concerns and their fears as their club is now fighting for survival. Sarah and Aidan, are you both lifelong members of Nafina? We are, yeah. Yeah, I started playing when I was about 10. Uh, yeah, I'm about 7, 7 or 8 I was down here playing, yeah. And did you meet in Nafina? We did, yeah, one of the summer camps probably over 20 years ago now. Yeah, we, yeah. we did summer camps from about 7, 8 on and then we hung around here all through our teenage years, 20s or whatever, so yeah. A lot of people watching will know a lot of Nafina people, but uh, you two went on and blossomed and became a knight. We did, yeah. He chased me for a few years and then eventually uh, got together in our 20s and got married in 2016 and now expecting our first child at the end of May, so very exciting. What has the last couple of days been like? Uh, they, they've been tough. I mean, like, uh, I was in Skullmovie there behind us. Uh, we grew up here, we played on the pitches, we hung around as teenagers on the pitches. Uh, Sarah's about to have a, a child that we'd hope would have the same life and uh, great times that we had here in the community and uh, we don't know what's going on. Uh, there's such an uncertainty here. Uh, we're hoping it won't happen but we, we just don't know. So it's been tough the last couple of days. And Sarah, I get the sense from talking to people that it's more than just kind of pitches. If you could sum up what the area is, could you do that in a couple of words? Uh, this has been our whole life. Um, as Aidan said, we grew up here, but our whole friendship group is here, our whole social circle is here. We socialise here every weekend. We go to every match possible just because we love it that much. And to think in four years' time that this little baby or little child won't have the same nursery facilities that are here at the moment is just so sad. It's just not OK. It's actually been a bit traumatic. I'm a member here for 40 years. I saw this club before this building was here. Um, I saw it before the all Weathers were here. I've seen the club start, thrive. I've seen it thrive. This is absolutely, this is a kick in the guts. This has ripped us apart. Well, I won't say ripped us apart, but it has absolutely, it's been a kick in the guts is the best way of phrasing it. Been described as tearing the heart and soul out of the community. What does it mean? Can you put into words how or why this could potentially tear Nafina's heart and soul out? Um, I don't think you'll ever tear the heart and soul out of Nafina. We will build, we will build, but it's just look at the look at the kids that are here today. My kids are here. I came across one of the girls that I used to babysit for her as I was growing up. Now she's going to be living on my road, and my kids will babysit her kids. I have three kids in this club. I want them to have the same experience as I had. This club is part and parcel of my life and I want that for other children here. That's why I'm involved here on a Saturday morning on a voluntary basis. That's why I train teams. It's all about passing on what this club has given us. It, it, it's a disaster and you know that it's not going to be for just three weeks or three years. You know it's going to be at least six, maybe ten and that, that'll be devastating for the club. And where are, when you look around, where are all these children going to go on a Saturday morning with no other grounds? It's a disgrace. And there are alternatives. They're always talking about underground. There's plenty of place around here for an underground train if they, want, if they have to have it, which I don't think they do have to have it. We have pl a lot of transport all around the whole city. I think that those who are planning these things should come out, spend three months of the year in the vicinity, be part of the locality and see the damage they're doing. They can't see this by sitting in an office chair and looking at a map. That's not good enough. It's human beings they're thinking of. We are thinking of them, but they're not thinking of human beings. They're not thinking of the future of these children. This is the centre of the community, and we know that other clubs have moved. They have moved their facility because it's so difficult to get land in the, in the urban areas, in the centre of communities. Other clubs have tried to actually move their clubhouse outside, get, you know, I suppose, uh, land is cheaper, get a bigger facility. But it hasn't worked for those communities. People don't follow. They want, they want it to be within the centre of their community. The children up here will have walked 
picked up. You'll see them walking along Movi Road. They, they identify with it, and I suppose a lot of built the... Um, so the you, you don't think if, if Nafina moved to a different place, you don't think all these kids who represent Nafina and are so tied to Nafina in that way, you don't think that bond will continue in a different place? Can you, if, if you take Nafina out of Nafina, does that mean it stops being Nafina in some senses? Well, to a certain okay, well, if I was to explain, I, I've, I've done two since as juvenile chair here in the club, and the one before, one of them was before the nursery, just as we were beginning to develop the nursery, and the other one was after. And what I can say is, like, what builds the nursery, what makes the nursery so, so strong? And to a certain extent, Nafina was probably one of the first clubs to develop a nursery. And what, what made it strong at the time is the identity with the local area, is with kids walking by. What sells it? It's actually the cars driving by and seeing all of these kids on a Saturday morning playing. So like at the end of the day we all know like parenting is, is much more difficult, it's much more challenging now. The challenge we actually face as parents in a lot of cases is actually trying to get our kids involved in physical activity, involved in social interaction. Um, you know a lot of a lot of kids at the moment that they just they, they, they will they will say that they can they can socially interact, let it be through the internet, through playing the, the PlayStation at home. But this is the one feature I suppose at the weekend where parents are actually able to get the kids, they can see the interaction, they can see the activity up here and they get their kids out on a Saturday morning on a Sunday morning, bring them up here it's absolutely, it's crucial will it work if we were to move out, you know for instance, up the road, out beyond the airport no won't, I'm absolutely certain it won't we will lose, we will lose the soul of Nafina We're standing on uh, one of the all weather pitches here in Nafina on Movi Road uh, this is one of the pitches that would uh, would would disappear, basically, or would be would be gone for the duration of almost seven years if this current proposal is to go ahead from TII. If this was to be lost, uh, it, it it would be, it would have disastrous consequences not only for the club but for, for 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 the children of the area. You know, we work very closely with ten primary schools locally to bring these these children up here every Saturday morning. And that would be gone. Uh, and we live in an age where you know th th there's, there's a huge emphasis on involvement in sport and sort of trying to overcome obesity and, and couch surfing and all that kind of thing. And if you were to take this away, you know that's that, that's another sort of 450 children who 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 I won't say necessarily heading that direction, but certainly they would be deprived of the opportunity of this every Saturday morning. It's a pretty special mix for someone seeing it for the first time. You've got a multiple All-Ireland winner lacing up the boots of a child who might be uh, kicking a ball for the first time. It's, uh, it's, it's very much gives a sense of how linked this is to the community. Your, your senior players are here on a Saturday morning working with the kids. You've got kids up here, as you mentioned, from local primary schools. It might be their first time here. How, how special, I suppose, is that bond, if you can put words on it? That's oh, very special. It's very special. I mean, there's a huge community spirit here. There's a huge, there's a, there's a huge bond between, between everybody here, between, between the guys who, sort of, who, who cut the grass to the guys who, sort of, who train the, uh, the under-8 hurlers. You know, it's just, it goes right through the club. Uh, and it's very, it's, it's very unique. I mean, as you say, I mean, Johnny Cooper, uh, or all Ireland winning D Dublin footballer, um, Johnny is as is as approachable here, like as as uh, as any of the rest of us, or, or, or as any of the players. Uh, and there is something something very special. Johnny came down yesterday evening. And he was he was fixing nets at the back of uh, one of the goals, for instance, and suddenly he was swamped by by by. Uh, by, by, by some of his fan base and, and that's the type of guy he is and, and Johnny is, 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 is a wonderful example of sort of what's come through this club and he's been playing here he started here probably in the nursery himself and he's worked his whole way through so you know are we to lose certain potential to Johnny Cooper's along the way as a result of, uh, of this change because I mean you know people will say look it's only seven years that, that we'd be without pitches or whatever yeah yeah seven years but seven years is, 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 uh, is a generation you know that's uh, Seven years where players, you know, kids couldn't aspire to be sort of what they'd always wanted to be. Every Nafina child aspires to play on the front pitch here. That's their ambition, right? That's that. That's how they see success. And if we were to lose that pitch for seven years, I mean, that's 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 seven years of kids who just won't get that opportunity. We need additional pitches. We are struggling right now. My facilities committee, with the grounds committee, developed a new pitch in our grounds up in Collinstown near the airport. We have another three acres up there full of trees and scrub that we also want and need to, de to develop. So we're looking for more pitches. We're not in the business of giving back pitches. We are struggling for pitches as, as we stand. I mean, you're going to have the consultation process, Martin. What questions do you think need to be asked? What would you like to ask the people who have spearheading this decision, the people who are pushing to make this uh, a depot for bore drilling machines? Well, the questions I'd like to ask is what rationale did they go through? 
to, to now select Moby Road as a potential location when, when it wasn't on any of the, addition, of the other drafts. And, and in addition to asking that question, we need to come forward and will come forward with the rationale as to why other locations, as potentially previously selected or draft selected, are a better fit for this, so that we can continue to offer this community facility which has been in, in our uh, use for decades, to continue that for the catchment that we have. Do you want the Metrolink here? We certainly are in favour of an, of an improvement in, in, uh, in our public uh, transport infrastructure. And we certainly, in our community, we do want it. So we want to find it and we want the, the development to be in the right place. Uh, and any uh, issues that will arise during the course of its construction, we want them to be considered and in the best interests of our local community while that construction phase uh, is ongoing. With respect, though, is that not having your cake and eating it? You, we want the infrastructure, but we want someone else to be incapacitated while that infrastructure is provided for us. I know the loss of the pitches here would be hugely disruptive for a number of years, but if you move the project 50 yards over the road, you're looking at the loss of 20 houses. Do you, do you accept that point? Uh, absolutely. And can, can, can I suggest, Ronan, that, uh, that maybe in our local community there are a number of very significant land banks that have been within the control of NAMA, uh, that we as taxpayers have, have, have funded um, and, and that have, have lay idle uh, and unavailable to our community during the course of our, of, of our recent history. Uh, and while they've lay, lay, laid idle, uh, we've continued to serve our community here in this location. So one has to ask the questions, uh, should our society be determined by uh, what's, what's, what's more appropriate or easy in engineering terms? Or should we be looking at a, at, at a more broader and holistic way of how we develop our, uh, our community in the greater interest and the best interest of all our community, not just uh, a, a Gaelic club uh, or not just a, a, a one particular section of it. We, we're certainly fully cognizant of that and we're fully and ready and willing to engage in that. Um, but right at the moment, our primary concern, once again, I say, is to find a location that we can continue to provide the service and interaction to our children in this local community. And, and the sense of scale here sometimes is, is, is a challenge to communicate. Along with our membership, we interact on a weekly basis with 10 primary schools in our local community. We serve those 10 primary schools and, and we pay our membership funds the support for those 10 primary schools in their physical education. So we Could that not be done if you if you were on a different pitch, if you were up in a green space, if you're up in say Abbottstown, if you're in Johnstown Park, if you're in St Vincent School, do you need this green space in particular to engage with those ten local schools? Uh, so this this strikes fundamentally to the heart of what of, of what the concept of Gaelic games, what the concept of a common Luclas Quail is about. A common Luclas Quail is about locality. It's about a, a, attachment to a sense of place it's about a pride in your local community it's about your locality we're not about finding a space outside of the M50 where people need to be bused to where our children need to be ferried at we operate best when we sit at the heart of our local community